Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're looking at how to render videos in Premiere Pro. And hey, if you're not familiar with us, we're all about helping you, the video creator, with templates, footage, tutorials, plugins, audio, and more. In fact, we have tons of free Premiere Pro templates ready to download. I put a link in the description down below, so make sure to hop over and grab some free stuff. So in today's tutorial, we're going to be showing you how to improve your timeline playback and how to speed up your editing workflow by learning how to render in Premiere Pro. But before we do, let's quickly go over what we actually mean by rendering, because there can be a little bit of confusion on the topic. There's really two main ways that people can use this term. The first is creating temporary video and audio files to help your timeline play back more smoothly. And that's actually what we're going to be going over today. But the other way that people use the term rendering is sort of interchangeably for the term exporting, which is basically taking your overall video and putting it into one unique file to be able to deliver for your final result. That's actually not what we're talking about today, but in case that's actually what you're looking for, we've actually done a couple of videos on exporting, and I'll link to those in the description below. One of the most common reasons that people use the first version of rendering is if their timeline is experiencing spotty or inconsistent playback speeds. So if that's you, we're gonna show you a couple of different solutions to help out. So here we are inside of Premiere Pro, and here in our timeline, we have a set of videos that will all combine together to create something a little unique. But here's the problem. When we try to play back our footage, it's not actually playing back in real time. It's stopping, jumping forwards, and it doesn't really help us to see the work that we've actually done. So in order to play back this at full speed, we need to render out our timeline. This will tell Premiere Pro to go over our entire timeline materials and create temporary video and audio files to help it play back what we have at its proper speed. But first, let's take a look at the top of the timeline here, where we can see that there's three different colored bars. green yellow, and red. Green is good. The green bar means that the segment of our timeline here has rendered previews associated with it, which means that you can play back your video at full quality, certain that it'll be smooth and full speed. The yellow is a caution. This means that there are no rendered preview files for this segment, and each frame will be rendered just before the playhead displays it. If this is an easy to process codec, your playback should still appear in real time, but there's still a chance that it won't. The red section, like the yellow, indicates that this segment does not have associated render preview files to help it play back. Additionally, this indicates that there are effects taking place during this segment and will make it even more difficult for your playback to be done smooth and in real time. You can see, for example, that if I take a yellow section here and then drop a warp stabilization effect onto it, it becomes red, indicating that there is a challenging effect present and to not expect smooth playback without rendering. And finally, there's a chance that you might have no color above some segments of your timeline at all. This means that this section doesn't have rendered preview files associated with it, but the codec of the media is simple enough that it's been designated to pretty much not even need one. Playback for these sections is pretty much guaranteed to be in real time. So if you look at your timeline and see one of these particular indicators, you know more or less what you're in for. So if you've got yellow or red sections and you're experiencing spotty playback, to solve that, we have a few options. First, we can simply hit the Enter key. What this does is render all of the effects present in our timeline between the set in and out markers. If you don't have in and out markers set, it'll just take into consideration literally any red sections on your entire timeline. So essentially, Premiere Pro is rendering out any sections that have video effects present. And once the rendering is done, these sections will turn green and be able to be played back more smoothly. You can also achieve this by going up to Sequence, render effects in to out. But this won't impact any yellow sections. So alternatively, what you can do is just straight render in to out. What this does is take into consideration both red and yellow sections and create preview files for both so that now everything turns green and can be played back more smoothly. And lastly, if for example you had a large timeline but you're just wanting to work on a small section and rendering out the whole timeline is just taking way too long, you can highlight a certain portion of your timeline and go up to Sequence and choose Render Selection, which will isolate the rendering to only that portion alone which you highlighted. So with each of those options, Premiere will go ahead and create temporary video and audio files associated with your project sections and allow you to have a much smoother playback. This is one way to make your editing experience much more enjoyable, as you can get a true understanding for what your changes have actually produced, seeing exactly what your transitions, effects, warp stabilizations, etc. look like in real time. 
But this is far from the only method to saving time and experiencing smooth response of playback in Premiere Pro. There's still a chance that if you're working with high resolution files or video codecs that are more difficult to handle, you'll still have a challenge with snappy responsive timeline work. One way to get around this is to use what are called proxy files, which we have a video all about if you're interested, and I've linked to it in the description below. But guys, that's just been a quick overview of how to render videos in Premiere Pro. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, as always, you can check out all of our videos here at motionarray.com. Thanks for stopping by, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.